DNA. We're uh, hacking DNA to make next gen semiconductor materials. Yeah, yeah, and and we'll we'll get into the yeah. Let's talk. Let's dive in. So, uh, researchers at Brookhaven National Laboratory, what they've did, what they've done is they've developed a new method for using DNA to precisely arrange materials at the nanoscale and produce a wide variety of metallic and semiconductor structures. So traditionally, science have programmed DNA strands to self-assemble molecules into targeted patterns, which I think we talked about in another podcast, um, um, folding and different things like that. This allows yep. them to essentially build structures from the bottom up. However, they were limited in the, in the types of materials that could be used. So what this team did was they took inspiration from prior work using DNA to organize silica. What they did was they collaborated with experts in material syn synthesis techniques, and uh, they created what's called a liquid phase and vapor phase infiltration. What this did was the methods al allowed precursors to bond to a nanostructure when introduced in liquid or gas form. What, they, what happened was by conducting these processes on the existing DNA arrangements, they could infiltrate the lattices with various metal and semiconductor elements, which is pretty crazy. Um, so what this did was this unified method, this unified method opens new avenues for advanced manufacturing by strategically designing nanomaterials. It could find applications in next-gen electronics, renewable energy sources, and more futuristic technologies that we might not even know about. So the researchers are now working to translate this technique through their, um, so their goal is to advance materials research by making their process, by standardizing their process, essentially. So it's groundbreaking um, that because this method can work so broadly across different classes of materials, swim, simply by switching the precursor used. So um, typically they spend years optimizing a process for just one type of material, but they've advanced this and, and this discovery is, is going to help them to scale it a lot quicker. This is interesting. I have all sorts of questions because most of these articles that we talk about, they talk about really cool scientific stuff, but yeah, they don't actually talk about specifically what it's going to do in the future. Like, what? Well, great. We've yeah. got this thing. It can create nanostructures. Great. Like, well, what's the plan? Are we building little, you know, we're going past uh, tiny homes into nano homes and <laughs> building them yeah i like that movie with matt damon uh, yeah yeah <laughs> so what's uh i can't remember the name but uh what's the point of this like are we building um this stuff so eventually we'll be able to grow electronics um this yeah, way so are we Let's talk about the structure specifically. So although the article doesn't go into specifics about the actual okay. nanostructures being produced, um, but uh, after doing some research, so the structures are being designed, it, it, we're talking nanoscale structures, right? On the order of nanometers. So it's much smaller than the size scale of say tissues or organs. So the applications on microelectronics, energy storage, other materials, uh, fields, and what just specifically it doesn't involve biological functionalities yet so the dna is being used solely as a template to precisely arrange other materials like met like metals not to encode or carry genetic information as we talked about before as people may or may not know um so the dna nanotechnology although it's a rapidly advancing field regenerating and, and we can get into this in a second though um, regenerating organs from this, and we can talk about that. It's an enormous challenge, um, and I, it remains far beyond our capabilities. And if we talk about organs and, and growing organs and things like that, we can get into stem cells, which is what they're doing right now, um, which is what they're experimenting on right now, which is really, really cool. Uh, but we're talking about inorganic materials, which are intended for semiconductor, optoelectronic, or other devices. Yeah, and that's why I'm I look at this and it's what this and what we talked about last time, liquid metal printing. Now we're gonna get to our T one thousand robots, right? 
we we definitely could. Well, we already are at the T1000 robot. I don't know if you saw the video of the uh, of the metal that's behind uh, bars. At uh, it's very very small, and it um, it actually does what the T1000 does. It melts itself down and then reassembles itself. I will have to take a look at that video, <laughs> and if we're not going to do a long term video on it i'll do a short one for a thing because that sounds really cool yeah we can talk now we're talking yeah we can talk about that in the future uh because you know i'm excited when you start abstracting this because at for a high level you're like okay what what does this mean what does this mean longer term it could mean that we are really talking about nano electronics potentially right you know we're talking about those those chips in our brains and or, or you know uh, your minuscule computers or you know computers for everything because they're they're so easy and small to make um it's going to be really interesting combining this kind of stuff with like i said the liquid metal and even the um carbon nanotube ribbon for energy collection when you put all of these things together from a okay i can <laughs> now just have this liquid metal uh, form a structure at a nano level that forms a structure at a macro level, obviously, yeah. and have it actually function as something. Yeah, we uh, and honestly, uh, we aren't too far off. So I think we're jumping uh, a Terminator uh, generation from Schwarzenegger's uh, Terminator to the T to the the liquid metal one. Um, we're, I, it seems like we're jumping right to that. But um, yeah, there's. If you if we if you look at our podcasts and you look at the different technologies and and you look to combine those, you could, in theory, develop a self-replicating, self-assembling, fully autonomous. I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> well, not only that, but we we talked about a lot of stuff. Like, how long are we away from Captain America Super Serum and a few of these other things, and not that far away. No, we're not. And uh, I, I I can almost guarantee, and we might get uh, uh, taken down for this, but I can almost guarantee that the U.S. government or one of the governments has some some experiments that they're doing. And again, we could <laughs> conspiracy theorist here. Why why wouldn't they be? Like I, I yeah, it's funny when you say stuff like this and people say conspiracy theory. Just you just take a step back. If you were the military, you'd be fooling around with a lot of different stuff just because that's what you do. Yeah, <laughs> whether it's worked, whether you're how far over your head you are, and all that kind of stuff, that's a whole different ball game. But the, the thing that I, the thing that that I think about when I think about stuff like this is, you think of, you look at what is being published and, and allowed to be published in the public domain, and then you just think about, okay, how much further advanced are they actually? You know, because they're just they're giving us tidbits or they're giving us little bits. Well, we have to take a step back also and just say, you know, you can't audit the Pentagon. There's trillions of dollars in there that just kind of disappear over years. Yeah. Um, and you know they're funding a lot of research. Like, you just know. You'd go yeah. back and say, no. Like, we go back to documents that are being released. The man who stare at goats and all the different stuff they were doing 50 years ago. The weather manipulation machines they were talking about in Congress 30 years ago. Yeah. You know, the stuff that were not you know conspiracy theory they were talking about it whether they were successful at making it whether but uh, on the congress floor about you know their enemies had this stuff so yeah. we, you have to sit back and say okay where are they now exactly. um yeah. and to think that uh, they're not at least trying to do this stuff whether they have any of it working or not it's just silly like it's just silly to, to close your eyes and go nobody nobody's experimenting on anything no 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah no um and the, the, if if we're talking about things that might be happening up here, i'm and this could just be that there's uh, misinformation but people are talking about how they're they're building up to a fake alien invasion in the next couple of years um and that's yeah we're we're getting way too off but yeah i just saw that i've just been seeing that lately on my tiktok which again tiktok you never know well with with the where ai is now you, it could happen anytime yeah especially with Fake. the new uh chat gpt um module that just got released i think yesterday where you can do text to video and the video is super realistic 
I haven't seen that add on, but there's a lot of them out there. And we're going to talk about yeah. um, a text uh, to presentation tool in a few minutes. Yeah. 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 No, but you should check it out. It, it literally got released yesterday. Uh, cool. So you might not have heard of it. It's not, it might not be GPT. It might be, it's through open AI, but um, who knows where it is, but yeah, have a look. Yeah, I love the AI tools too so much. I want to do a separate thing on just like one AI tool a week or something as we discover new yeah. stuff as it comes out. Just because it's it's yeah. it's hard to stay on top of unless you're actually staying on top of it. Yeah, we can even build it into this. Have two do two articles and one AI uh, tool every week. While doing an AI tool takes a little bit of time because I think you can't just say, "Oh, this is great." You kind of have to go through it, the functionality <laughs> a little bit, and yeah, I'm um, like. It's yeah. different when we were talking the other day when we went through I don't know, about 20 and there was four of us on each had three or four tools yeah. to recommend. It's different than, hey, let's show you how you can really use like if I want to demo Harpa AI, for example, a tool I use all the time. I'm only using two or three commands in it. Yeah, I, I'd really take at least a half hour to go through and show everybody everything at least Yeah, to get a feel for it. For sure. So. Yeah, yeah I, that's why we have to take a look and see what that means. But anyway, back to the nano uh, technology here, which is super cool. And again, yeah. this always takes me back to we talk about self-replicating nano robots. We're talking about uh, self-structuring DNA at a, a nano level. The replicators on Star Stargate that end up destroying everything. Yeah, um, that. You know, of all the enemies everywhere, it's this that destroyed the Stargate universe. <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. and we're building it now. So um, we talked about they aren't talking about organs. They're talking about metal yeah. structures. Yeah. So besides electronics, what kind of medical devices or even external devices would we be creating nano structures for yeah so um so some examples for for drug and gene delivery so dna organ or origami organami jesus can be programmed to transport uh, agents like drugs proteins nucleic acids to specific cell types and tissues now just a sidebar um what this made me think of is there was some research done quite a few years ago where they were using viruses to transport uh, vaccines specifically to cells. So um, what this means for this, I don't know what the difference is. Obviously, this is using hacked DNA, uh, but the structures could be engineered to release the cargo upon receiving specific biological triggers, which is really cool. Um, the other big thing, and I don't know if you saw this, but um, cancer targeting, but sidebar again, Russia just announced that they have uh what is it uh some sort of vaccine or or some sort of something as it relates to cancer i'll have to we'll have to find it later but um but specifically for this dna constructs are being designed to selectively deliver cancer drugs or imaging agents to to tumor sites so um they could by using properties like shape surface chemistry um, they could allow to, they could hone in on specific cancer markers. Um, there could be tissue engineering. So DNA scaffolds could provide biocompatible frameworks to arrange cells and mimic natural uh, extracellular matrices for regenerating tissues and organs. So there's your regeneration there, but again, we'll have to see. Um, and then vaccines. So nanoscale DNA called, uh, um, could mimic virus-sized virus structures to simulate immune responses similar to live vaccines. So the, the benefit to this is they would be at higher purity and potentially lower cost. And then the last one is medical implants. So um, we talked about this too, but you could have a DNA robot that assembles themselves into self-powered biocompatible replacement structures like artificial bone or different things like that as the body degrades. So screw reversing time. Let's just put in DNA robots. Ah, so this is the technique where um, Wolverine gets all his bones coated with a dent. At, at Adamantium. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah. So, and then there was another what was the other i can't remember the other show um where someone's limb 
uh, got cut off and then the the DNA robots completely reassembled it and re remade it right away. I can't remember what that was, but sounds like an altered carbon thing. Yeah, potentially altered carbon. That was a good show. <laughs> It, the first ep the first season was great. The second season was uh, okay. Yeah. Didn't they have a different lead actor in the second season? Yeah, which is cool. I mean, yeah. oh yeah. I actually really like that concept because you could have you could do so much with it. Yeah. It is just too bad that they went a little too big on the second season, which yeah. is always a problem. Yeah. Yeah. There's when a lot of shows that are doing that now, like that True Detective and Fargo. Those yeah. are, uh, yeah, anyways, <laughs> as we digress. Well, that's a great idea because, you yeah. know, like Stargate, like a lot of these things, Doctor Who, these were vehicles to for storytelling vehicles yeah. for anything, right? Yeah, absolutely. And these types of things where you can every season bring in new lead actors that are either with true detectives or different detectives, but with like Altered Carbon, it's the same person. Yeah. And you can really do a lot with that, which is interesting. Yeah. Anyway, yes, we digress. Yeah. Um, this is really interesting. I love the DNA uh, yeah. level nanostructure stuff. Do, do we want to talk about hacked DNA? Because we talked about it a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So, um, go ahead. Oh. No, no, go ahead. What is hacked DNA? And, <laughs> you know, like every time I hear hacked DNA, I get a little. Um, worried i know so in this case hack dna um they're, they're essentially um using dna as a template so what they're doing is using a synthetic is they're using synthetic dna strands that are designed and synthesized in the lab to specific sequences and properties needed for self-assembly so this is commonly done in DNA nanotechnology research. So what they're doing specifically is they are creating non-biological DNA constructs with programmed nucleotide-based pairs, patterns that allow the strands to fold into targeted geometric configurations via molecular recognition or binding. What this means is the, the engineered DNA lattices, then what they do is they direct the arrangements of other molecules or materials deposited onto them, but they do not contain full DNA from living or encoded biological functions. Um, so again, hack DNA could wrongly imply manipulations of genetic code, and that's that's a whole new ballgame when we're talking CRISPR. Um, but the researchers really are just exploiting the programmable self pro, uh, self folding properties of DNA like structures to precisely prototype materials in three D. Yeah, this sounds like the next generation of three D printing. Yeah, essentially. And we did talk about that, actually, um, in a previous uh, where we were talking about how they were able to uh, achieve a, a certain fold or something with, with I can't remember. We've talked yeah, about and, we, and last time we were talking about liquid metal printing, but the, there was a yeah. resolution problem still. Yeah. And this kind of, you know, it, it it's the base. You, whatever material you pour on top of it, it deals with. And this kind of sounds like they should work together to get you much more high resolution because this is building okay. structures at the nano level. Well, this is they could potentially build it themselves, right? Without that's what I mean. Uh, yeah, yeah. You but you could just program it. Uh, for example, it's it's uh, whatever it is. You program it with your computer and say, hey, I need a new part, new this, a new cup. I don't know, whatever. I can't think of anything right now because I'm still new metal Starbucks cup for my coffee. <laughs> uh, or we can create Stanley's without lead. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love, I, uh, sorry. I love the, the viral campaign that they did, but um, with the, with the, with the burnt car. And yeah. But... Yeah. And since we're on that, I saw a video where like they were chesting everything and, and it mug lasted okay among other mugs, but definitely had a reaction to the lead test. It didn't indicate necessarily lead, but none of the others had a reaction and it did. So it was interesting yeah. to see. Um, just figured I'd try and keep those thoughts together. Sure. What, what were what were we talking? Oh, building a you it press a button and then it yeah. builds it for you. Just it dumps yeah. the metal on there and it builds it for you. Yeah. Up. So you wouldn't have all the rough edges. It would be super smooth. Yeah. So if you're missing parts, you need a screw. You need a whatever. You could just program it in and off you go. Download yeah. the instructions. I think that's where we're going with this for sure. And uh, we've got. 
isn't it Star Trek that uses replicators? And I know it does it for food, yeah. but and does it for things. I think we're getting to that. Yeah, I well, not for a while, but we're getting yeah. there. Like the 3D printers are good, but it takes hours to create just a little thing. Yeah. And as, as long as you don't put too much detail on it. Yeah. So cool. this is really cool to to watch. Um, is there anything you wanted to add before we jumped on? No, we we talked about a lot. I was going to add uh, the Star Trek replicators thing on at the end, but we got into that. So um, it's it's going to be cool to see where a lot of this again, everything that we talk about for those listening, like we're talking um, at early early discovery phases, and so things that we're talking about today might not come to fruition or even be relevant to 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 the general public for multiple years. 